Are you struggling to break down a novel into key ideas or events? Let's say you're a student, a book enthusiast, or even a writer. Google's Notebook LM can help. In this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to upload a novel and use AI to summarize or even outline its main events and ideas. So that sounds good. Let's dive right in. The first step you want to do is prepare your novel file. So before we get started, what I'm going to do is here I found a PDF for A Tale of Two Cities. And as you can see, this is 330 pages long. And what I want to ensure is that this is ready for upload. First of all, I want to check the file format. So Notebook LM supports a bunch of files, supports PDF, supports TXT markdown, and even audio. You can also insert documents through Google Docs or Google Slides, a link, which can be either a website or YouTube, or you can even paste text. So there's a bunch of ways that you can insert data into this tool. In some cases, you might need to split large files into smaller sections or even chapters. However, this is very rare. In this case, you'll see that the source limit is 0 to 50. So if I were to add this, so let me just download this to my downloads here. And if I go here, I can insert this. I can give it a name. So I can select the source. So this is still uploading. Oops. So this is still uploading. So in a second, I'll be able to select the source. And I'll be able to do a bunch of new things. But if you were to insert multiple items, you'll see that you might want to divide them or organize them better into different chapters or sections. What I found is that there's a lot of memory in Notebook LM, and this is pretty much not an issue. So after you have uploaded this text, here you immediately get a quick summary. So the provided text is a collection of excerpts from a novel like The Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. It shows a table of contents with chapter titles and page numbers, followed by various passages depicting characters and events. The narrative spans multiple settings and time periods, primarily focused on the French Revolution. So here I can do a few interesting things. I can add a note. I can add an audio overview. I can provide or I can create a briefing doc. So let's have a look at what each of these actually does. So let's say that I want to add a note. So this is just a free input type of field. So this is a novel by Charles Dickens. So this is a note. I can get Notebook LM to generate a conversation. So this may take a few minutes. No need to stick around. So I can get back to this later. I can also create a briefing dog. So as you can see, this is now generating as well. What I also like is that here I have a few questions that can help me do or take the next steps, right? So let's say I can say what narrative threads intertwine throughout this historical fiction. How does the novel portray the French Revolution's impact? So I can literally ask questions and chat with my document. So while this is creating the answer to this question, as well as creating the conversation and the note there, I got this information. So technically what I could do is say, explain this to me in short and like I'm five years old. So I can also kind of go one step deeper. Okay, let's see. For some reason, this isn't accepting my prompt. But what I could do technically is... Let me just go to ChatGPT here and just paste in the whole thing. So explain this to me in short, like I'm five. So you will also see that I'm able to combine the input and output from a couple of different tools. So short explanation, like you're five years old. A long time ago in France, some people were very rich and had fancy clothes and big houses. Other people were very poor and hungry. The poor people got so angry at the rich people that they started a big fight called the revolution. Dr. Manette was a nice man who was locked up for a long time by the mean rich people. After he got out, he was happy, but the fighting made every second 
might made everyone scared. Some people who are fighting did good things, but some did mean things, like using a scary machine called the guillotine to hurt others. In the end, the big fight changed France a lot. Some things got better, some things got much worse. It showed how angry people can change the world, but also how they can hurt each other if they're not careful. Create an image for the above. So, as you can see, you can take this wherever you want. Create the actual image. So it seems like it's creating a prompt for the image rather than the actual image. Okay, I guess because I'm on, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's created a NASCII, a text-based type of image. That's an interesting guillotine. Okay, so what you could do is technically grab this. If I were to start a new chat window here, and use a different model, like the 4.0, I can create an image. But, while this is generating, what I want to do is get back to my notebook LM. So for some reason, yeah, I'm... let's just try that, explain that to me, in short, like I'm five years old. Okay, so I didn't really, it wasn't able to take in the whole thing right there, but if I just said explain this to me in short and like I'm five, it created something similar, but with more context about what the book is all about. So, yeah, that's the JetGPT image. Anyway, so this is one thing that you can do. And here I can keep asking different questions. So, what about they decided to fight and make things fair? So I can keep asking these questions, which is in a way like I'm speaking and getting to have a conversation with the contents of the book, right? So that's the thing to note. So the common people of France decided to fight against the monarchy due to the paraphrase of inequality and injustice they faced. So again, I can say, explain this to me like I'm five. So I can keep going as long as I want. Now, here we have the audio that was generated based on this and what I want to ensure is that this gets recorded so yeah this should be recorded so let's have a listen to this all right so we're diving into Dickens today a tale of two fitties yeah exactly it can be a tough read to peel back the layers everyone's got secrets like we're all mysteries to each other even to ourselves sometimes it's unsettling but fascinating that's Dickens for you but you know that image of digging someone out of a grave. Yeah, that one stuck with... As you can see, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. There's also this interactive mode where now you can use your microphone. So let me just use my microphone to actually have a... or get into the whole conversation, right? So let's test this thing out. So I'm going to allow my microphone right here. And I should be able to join the conversation right here. All right, so we're diving into Dickens today. A Tale of Two Cities. Yeah, exactly. It can be a tough read, though, you know? Oh, absolutely. It is, it is. And um, so much going on. Lots to unpack. So, oh, hey, I think our listeners got something to say. That's a very interesting conversation, but I'm not sure if this is the right book for me to read. Can you give me some information and help me de decide this? Okay, that's a great question and totally fair. Let's unpack this. Yeah, it's a big commitment and Dickens isn't for everyone. It's not exactly a light beach weed, right? So maybe we can help you figure out if this book is for you. Exactly. And it's not just about the plot, but what you're looking to get out of a reading experience. So A Tale of Two Cities. It's a historical novel set during the French Revolution. But it's also about so much more than that. Right, like the way people are all connected and this idea of being recalled to life, what does that even mean? You see that theme come up again and again, the idea of sacrifice. Yeah, it's about personal redemption and all that, but also about revolution and social injustice. The book is full of big ideas. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. You mentioned sacrifice. Can you tell me more about that?
That's a great question. It's a major theme in the book. Yeah, sacrifices everywhere on so many different levels. Okay, let's unpack this. It's not just about dying for a cause, although we definitely see that. It's also about giving up things, your life, your happiness. Even your reputation. And those acts have rippling consequences. Yeah, and it makes you think, what's worth giving up everything for? Absolutely, and Dickens explores this from different angles. We see characters choosing to give up things for other people, but also for what they believe in. Right, like... So as you can see, there's a lot that you can do with this. It is not only now generating the podcast, but you can also join in the conversation, which is pretty insane. You can ask anything about this, and you can also explore other things. Because at the end of the day, you are speaking with an artificial intelligence. So anything that is potentially even in the book can be discussed as if you're having a conversation with the context of the book that you would have provided. Over here, again, you can add multiple sources. So here I have a source limit of one. So I can add more information about this. So let's say that I hate um, a tale of two cities, for example. Let's have a look at this. So let's add this conversation and let's see if we can add this directly in Notebook Eldon as a website. So I'm just paste this in. And let's see if we are able to. No, I don't want to refresh my chest history. Does everyone like a tale of two PCPs? So now this should tell me no, because it has different sources included there as well. Not everyone enjoys reading it. Reddit user, nice, the sources express, express their dislike for the book, finding it predictable and uninteresting. They specifically critique the over-descriptive writing style and the lack of character development. So, as you can see, I can then also regenerate the whole podcasting and even have further conversations about this. I can ask something more about the criticism. So what specific criticism says the 15 year old reader make of a tale of cities. So let's see if this is, yep. So this guy here said, this book isn't much of a history lesson. If it was a history lesson, I'd hope that maybe the teacher would have told us anything about the French revolution. Here it says that this guy is 15 years old. So at 15, I thought this book was, yep. So there is the information. I guess about that. I don't know if it's specifically this user here. But anyway, it is actively considering the sources there. So this is a quick way to really insert any type of document, get the summary, and even have a chat with the actual book. Right? So now I have two sources here. We can add 148 different sources, which is a big number. And there's always this audio overview that we can look at. If we were to close this and have a look at the note that was generated of this briefing doc, there is all the information in a bullet point type of outline as well. Here there's also a timeline. So you can also generate an on FAQ and the study guide. So this timeline is quite interesting because it allows you to grab the things that happened and sort of organize them in a chronological order. And if we have a look at this, we get this timeline. So 1775, early years, 1780, 1785, cast of characters. So it's not just about the timeline itself. It also provided information about the cast of characters, supporting characters, other characters. So pretty good. Then I have the study guide which is a short answer quiz and the keys. So what is the significance of the opening line? And we have the answers for those. We have essay questions. So if you're an academic, you can also consider these questions. There's a glossary here. So there's a lot that you can do based on one input document. And here there is the frequently asked questions. So again, more resources based on just that one or those two different sources. In a separate video, what I will include is or are different ways how you can use these 
or this information and combine it with other tools. But for the moment, what I want to leave you with are potentially different ways how you can get better results from Notebook LM. And the first thing is ask specific questions. For example, if you say, what is the main theme of this novel? Or summarize the climax. That is good. It's much more specific than tell me about the book. So be specific. The second is use follow-up queries. So as we saw here, there's a lot of follow-up questions that get automatically generated and that you can also generate yourself. So don't stop at the first response. I would encourage you to keep going. Number three is combine sources, just like I did with adding the PDF here and a Reddit document or a Reddit website. If you have related files like author interviews, reviews, anything that can provide deeper insights, go ahead and upload it because it will give you better insights. So those are the main tips that I would encourage you to explore when using Notebook LM. With that said, with Notebook LM, breaking down novel into summaries or even outlines has never been easier. If you're studying, if you're analyzing, or if you're just organizing your thoughts, no matter what it is, this tool can save you hours at a time. So if you found this tutorial helpful, I would encourage you to, first of all, check out Notebook LM. Secondly, hit the like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And finally, check out the link in the description to see how I can help you with AI and automation in your business. I'll speak to you in the next video.